Welcome to Flip Lesson 42 for the fifth grade. Today we're going to take a look at a couple different ideas when it comes to division. The first idea that we want to look at is the idea of short division. All right? And this is a, a shortcut that's going to help us do simpler division just a, a little bit faster. All right? So first of all, we'll look at what long division looks like. And then I'll show you what short division looks like. So two goes into three uh, one time, right? One times two is two. And then we subtract. Three minus two is one. And then the next step is bring down the two. Now two goes into 12. How many times? Would be six. Six times two is 12. Subtract. It is zero, and we have no remainder. So this is our our example of long division. Now, short division is basically going to get rid of um, showing all that work underneath the actual division problem. And instead, we're going to do a little bit more mental math in our head to help us get through an easier problem or a, a simpler um, division problem. So we say two goes into three. How many times? one. Three minus two gives us a one left over and then we would normally we would bring down the two but instead we're gonna put that one that was left over right there and what that means now is that I have a 12. A one here and a two here and that makes a 12. And so now two goes into 12 six times. Six times two is 12 there's no remainder. So what you see here is that instead of instead of doing this and putting the one here and then bringing down the two, instead of bringing the two down, I took this one and I put it up here. All right. And so in the end, right, the work just showed where I put that one way up here. All right. So that's an example of short division. Let's try another problem to see how it works some more. It says a total of 735 pop cans were picked up and placed in five bags. If there's an equal number of cans in each bag, how many cans are in each bag? And so we're looking at five going into being divided by 735. Sorry, 735 divided by five. Right. And so this time we're going to use short division instead of long division, right? So we're going to do the the subtracting we're going to do mentally, right? So five goes into seven one time, right? Seven minus five, we know we have a leftover two, so the two goes right there, all right? So it's not above the bar, it's under the bar, all right? Next we go five now into twenty-three. Right, here's our 23 right here. 23. And so 5 goes into 23 four times. 4 times 5 is 20. 23 minus 20 is going to give us 3 left over. Right. So 3 goes here. And then finally, we're going to look at our last group, which is right here, which now says 35. 5 goes into 35 seven times. And so in the end, we use short division to figure out that there are 147 cans in each bag. And so we have that idea, working with short division. Right? The other part of this lesson is talking about divisibility tests or divisibility rules. Is a number divisible by a particular number? Um, we've looked at these rules already. All right. We've looked at the last digit rules. So when we look at the last digit of a number, it's divisible by two if the last digit is even. So for example, as I look at this number, this is an even number at the end. That means this number can be divided by two. It doesn't tell me to solve for it. It's just yes or no. Can it be divided by two? And we want this mental process to say yes, it is divisible by two. All right. 
five. If there's a five in the last digit, for example, here, right, we can say, yes, that number is divisible by five, right? The other thing is if there is a zero, right, we know those numbers are divisible by five, right? Five, 10, 15, 20, there is a pattern there, right? And then the last example would be if the last digit is zero, right? And of course, none of the numbers up on the screen end in a zero, so none of them are divisible by 10. So we have this first set of rules that we looked at just a little bit ago. All right. And so I'm going to hide those ones. And now we want to look at a new set of rules. All right. All right. And this set of rules is known as the sum of digits rule. And so we're going to add up some digits. And by adding up some digits, we're going to get an answer. And if that answer is divisible by a particular number, it's going to work. Let's try our first example. First rule says a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. All right, so let's take our first number. It says 1, 3, and 5. All right, if we add those three numbers together, we're going to get 1 plus 3 equals 4, and 4 plus 5 equals 9. All right, so I added the digits together to get a 9. Now the question is, is this new 9 divisible by 3? The answer would be yes. This is divisible by 3. And according to math, what we learned is that because the sum of our three numbers equals 9, and that number is divisible by 3, that means this whole number can be divided by 3. What is the answer? That's not what we're looking for at this moment. Right now, we're saying, can this be divided by 3? And the answer right now is, yes, it can be divided by 3. All right. Let's try another one. Let's look at 246. We add up the digits. 2 plus 4 equals 6 plus another 6 equals 12. Is 12 divisible by 3? All right. Can we do this? The answer is yes, we can. Because we can do this, that means this number is divisible by 3. All right. Because we added that up. Right. So that's the first rule. Right. Second rule, we're actually going to jump down to number 9, because 9 is very, very similar to 3. Right. It says, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. So almost the exact same rule, but now when we add up our digits, it needs to be equal to a multiple of 9. Right. So if we start here at 135 again, we see 1 plus 3 plus 5. We said that's a 9. The question is, is 9 divisible by 9? The answer is yes, which means that this number can be divided by 9. Let's go down here to this one. 4 plus 2 plus 3 is going to give us an answer of 9. Is 9 divisible by 9? Yes. So this number follows this rule. All right? And so it is divisible by 9. All right? Then, the last rule, rule number six, this is the rule that has two steps involved, all right? So it says, if the sum of the digits is divisible by two and three. That is the wrong rule. If... should say if the number is divisible by 2 and 3. Let me explain what that means. If we look at this number, 135, the first thing we have to do is follow the rule for 2. Right? I'm going to pull that rule back out. If the last digit is an even number, right? if the last digit is an even number, is this digit right here an even number? The answer is no. Because it's not an even, even number, this number cannot be divisible by 6. All right, so we first have to test out this rule. Now, if that rule works, then we can test out our second number. All right. OK, 
Okay, our first number, 135, didn't work, right? It's not divisible by 2, so it's also not divisible by 6. Let's look at our second number. First of all, we're going to look at our last digit, which is a 6. Is 6 divisible by 2? Is it an even number? Yes, right? So it is divisible by 2, right? We could divide this number by 2. Now, the second question that we need to ask ourselves is, is this number divisible also, keyword, also divisible by 3? So now we got to add up our digits, 2 plus 4 plus 6, right? And since we did this earlier, we know that that equals 12, and that 12 is divisible by 3. And so this, we said, is even, so it's divisible by 2. So yes, it is divisible by 2. Yes, it is divisible by 3. So what that means, according to rule number 6, is that 246, yes, it is divisible by 6 also. Let's try another one of those. All right, let's try another one. Let's go to 381, all right? The one number we haven't used yet. All right, I'm going to slide this down. First thing we're doing is looking here, last digit. Is it an even number? The answer is no, which means it is not divisible by 2, right? We can't divide by 2. Because we can't divide by 2, that means we cannot divide by 6. All right. Rule number three, not too hard to follow. Rule number nine, not too hard to follow, right? Adding up those digits. But as we work with rule number six, right, as we rewrite the rule, right, if the number is divisible by two and three. So we have to follow the rule for two and we have to follow the rule for three to get us that answer. And then it is divisible by six. So that's the one that can get just a little bit tricky. All right, I'm going to leave you with some sample problems, working with short division, and then also working with divisibility rules for three, six, and nine. And if you have questions, come with your questions tomorrow. That is lesson 42.